still got the five ton in here. Um, it's kind of an afterthought, but I figured as long as I've got it in here, um, I'd go ahead and go over a couple of more things with you guys, uh, since it is a good stock example of the truck. Uh, and what, what I'm going to go over with you right now is uh, the fuel system basics on a uh, 931 or M939A2 any series truck, because uh, they're all basically the same, except some have dual tanks and some don't. Um, so let's get started here. And we've got is a M931A2 truck with a 8.3 liter uh, 6 CTA Cummins engine, turbo diesel. Uh, if you got one of these trucks, I'm sure you already know that. You know the specifics, or at least some of them. Uh, but let's start at, well, the starting point for fuel, which would be the tank. And... Um, most people run off the driver's side tank. Uh, I do. Most of the time. So you've got... Uh, shit, I don't even know what capacity this is. Yeah, it's really not important. There's two tanks on this thing. Probably a 50 gallon tank on each side. It looks like about that. Um... The big thing with the 939A2 series trucks is they like to suck air and then they're hard to start or they won't start at all. So what you've got is your tank and of course your other tank on the other side. You've got supply and return lines that come together onto the frame and they all end up right here under the driver's side corner of the cab. Right here is your switching valve. Now on any truck with dual tanks, the tractors and the wreckers, um, you will have the switching valve. On the cargo trucks and M923s and all, you're not going to have this valve because they only have a single tank. Um, but a lot of times you'll find your leaks are here and this is kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, you've actually got to drop the valve down and out to change these lines. Um, they are just push lock fittings as you can see. Uh, so you don't have to get a whole new assembly or buy the assembly. You can just cut the hose off of the fittings carefully with a razor knife and put a new piece of half inch hose on. That's that's what I do because uh, there's no point in spending all that money when you can just use a, a 50 cent piece of hose and reuse your connectors. Um, you see the top of your valve is right there and all you got to do is take that uh, screw out and there's some bolts down underneath um, from there you go down along the frame and you end up coming to this giant ass primary filter canister right there and uh, you have one of these trucks you're familiar with it this was actually a retrofit they didn't all originally come with these so if your truck doesn't have it um, it just never got done, uh, an MWO. Um, what I find most of the time on these trucks is either the line from the frame to the canister is rotted and is sucking air, or the line from the canister up to the lift pump is rotted and it's sucking air there. Now, uh, these lift pumps are not known to be problematic on these trucks. Um, I think I've replaced one. Um, and I honestly don't even use them to prime the thing. Uh, I've got something else I use and I'll, I'll show you what that is. But uh, those filters are a pain in the ass to change just because the canister and all is so heavy. Uh, the filters are kind of expensive. Um, what I've done on my wreckers, is I changed the whole thing out. Um, I just used a, a Napa 4770 filter base and then, you know, you can... Make your own choice of filter for what micron you want. Uh, bolts right on, you just reuse all the fittings, it's all half inch stuff. Um, I think you, I had to drill two holes or whatever to, to mount it. Reused one existing hole and drilled two more so I had all three bolts in it. Um, let's see. So you go from there, your lift pump, then hard line up to your filter there, your secondary filter, which is you need the number. BF 1226 is a good number. 
uh, and you can cross-reference them by any other brand filter you want. You don't have to run a bald one. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a quality filter. Um, let me climb my happy ass up here. Uh, then the most important part of bleeding this is, oh, let me see if I got a light. On the back of the pump, up near the front, You see that? That's a 10 millimeter bolt. Right there, that one. Um, you break that loose carefully because it is uh, very fragile. Use a 10 millimeter. Uh, don't use something too big. It's brass. If you round it off, you're screwed. Um, that's your bleed screw. If you're getting fuel out right there, um, it should start. Um, what I do is I, I crack that loose and I, I use uh, I've got a special cap I made and I'll show you in a minute that I use to pressurize the fuel tank with air with this open and then when fuel starts dripping out of this you close it and it'll fire right up um, now this is a P7100 injector pump the uh, infamous P pump that everybody loves for the 5.9 the 12 valve Cummins um, and there are a couple of things that'll keep it from starting on this pump even if you you have fuel there and you don't have any uh, air leaks and uh, <coughs> number one is your shutdown solenoid will sometimes fail and uh, what it is when you turn your switches on you go to start it this will retract and lets this lever come forward and that's the run position um, now that can either fail to retract at all when you're starting it and it keeps it in the shutdown position or it can uh, retract and let it run for a little bit and then when the solenoid gets hot it'll slowly start to release and then it'll shut the truck down um, and uh, one other thing I've seen with these is sometimes this will retract just fine but the springs inside of the pump that work this arm get weak and even with this retracted, the arm itself will not kick into the run position under its own power because, well, like I said, the springs inside the pump body are uh, worn. So uh, a lot of people take these off and just throw them away. You don't have to have it. Um, there's an emergency stop cable in the cab that um, if you just pull that, it, it shuts it down and you don't have to get out here and reset anything. It, uh, it works on its own. So, uh, I think that's about all I wanted to tell you on the pump itself. Uh, you shouldn't ever have to crack any of the injector lines loose to bleed the fuel system on these trucks. If you get fuel at that 10 millimeter up there and if this is all working the way it's supposed to, you never have to touch an injector line. Um, I don't know why everybody insists that you do. It's a fucking fable. Um, just keep that in mind. Don't touch the damn injector lines. You don't have to. Things are working right there. You got fuel up there and still not running. There's something else wrong. Um, this is my cap I was talking about and it's just a regular cap. And uh, I drilled a hole in it and threaded it 1 8 NPT. And I just used this little um, tire a Schrader valve that I uh, got at Napa. I think it was two or three dollars. It's, it's eighth inch NPT. It threads right in. And uh, you've got to make sure you've got a good gasket on your cap. And this one is a bit corroded. Uh, it's been sitting with not out a full tank of fuel, and it's very humid down here. But uh, make sure you got a good gasket. Make sure it stays in. And uh, what I do is I either We'll crank this truck enough to get, you know, 10, 20 pounds of air pressure and then uh, put my cap on and stick my air hose on it and let it let it air while the bleeder valve is open. You've got to be careful not to put too much pressure in because um, you can rupture these tanks and they explode with quite a force. Um, I haven't done it, but I have seen somebody else do it. Um, and it can be deadly if you're very nearby. Uh, you know, stainless steel, shrapnel. Uh, not cool so uh, be careful with that 
Uh, I generally I'll use my my deuce or something sitting by running so I've got a constant supply of air pressure because it can take a little while if, if the whole system is drained back to get fuel up to the pump again um, and you've got to fill it uh, you know put air in it and then take the thing off so it doesn't blow the tank up and then wait for the you can hear the pressure bleeding down because these tanks are vented um, but they're not vented enough to let enough air out that it's not going to explode if you leave it so um, you've got to pay attention to it uh, and just listen for fuel coming out up top you can hear it when it starts bubbling um, it, all in all let me let me show you how this how a properly serviced truck and I have in fact replaced everything on on this all the lines and the filters and this that and the other so let me show you this master power then That's how these trucks should start, okay? So. I'm not sure if I can even get it to kick the cylinder out without cranking. Let's see. Yeah, see? Is the solenoid still in shutdown position? I'm not sure usually just bumping it like that okay you see it only half ass retracted actually it's completely gone back hasn't it yep all right that's pretty much all i wanted to show you that's just a little bit of basic information about the fuel system so if you're having a problem starting your truck you can get the thing going um i've covered just about everything I've ever seen uh, issue wise with the fuel systems on one of these trucks um, Hope it's helpful to you. I know it will be for some people at least um, If you haven't already, please like and subscribe uh, Share the video if you want to I appreciate it. Every little bit helps And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks